Welcome back everyone to Strathmore's 2020 online workshop series. This is Leslie of Leslie Writes It All with another creative watercoloring class. In this second class, we'll be exploring how to use watercolor in brush lettering. So for this class, I'll continue to use the Dowler Brownie Aquafine watercolor set of 24 um, colors. Um, in addition to that, I have my Sakura Micron pens, I have two gel pens, one in white and one in gold, and we're just going to use those to add detailing um, to our lettering. And instead of the block of watercolor paper, I am using the Strathmore Cold Press Watercolor Journal. As you can see, I've already swatched out my paints. Um, I like to keep that handy to be able to see all the colors and find it easily. For this class, um, I do want to do a watercolor galaxy, so I will be using cooler colors in contrast to the uh, previous class, which used mostly warm colors. Um, so this time I'll be focusing a lot on the purples, blues, um, pink as well, um, to create kind of a galaxy effect with our brush lettering. As for the brush, I'm using the Princeton round brush in size 4. I think it's a great size. Um, it's going to let us give a lot of detailing to what we're doing, but it's also um, big enough to paint large areas. So as with the first class, um, this class is going to use very basic shapes um, to create a design that overall will look really um, intricate and impressive. Um, but honestly, all we're doing is painting tiny little stars. So I do use, again, the back side of one of the um, journal pages just to practice and, and see what kind of shapes I want or colors I want to use. So go ahead and take the time. Basically, you're just doing a regular five-pointed star, however you like to draw it. You can go ahead and paint it and then just fill in the center. Uh, I like to practice doing different sizes, different colors. Um, that way you kind of have a point of reference when you're actually doing the final piece. Um, don't be afraid to paint really large stars. Um, this one I'm doing just to see what it would look like. Um, and it kind of lets you practice brush control as well. And if you have a larger star, it'll be kind of easier to play around with adding an additional color too. So here I'm using a blue mixed with some purple. And just to reiterate, I am using the Princeton Velvet Touch um, round tip watercolor brush in size 4. If you are finding that it's difficult for you to paint very small detailed things using a size 4, please feel free to use something smaller like a size 2 or 3 even might help. Um, but I do like round tip brushes because it gives you a little flexibility in terms of being able to paint thinner lines as well as thicker lines. So our little practice sheet here, um, it's more than just uh, for practicing stars. We're also going to cover a little bit of uh, what it is to do brush lettering. So um, like I said, a round tip brush um, is going to give you the flexibility to create thin lines as well as thicker lines. And that's basically the, um, the two basic strokes of calligraphy. So when you're doing your upstrokes, so when your brush is heading upward, you're going to create a thin line. And then when you're going downward, you're going to press harder on the brush and that's going to create a thicker line. So if we were to use a brush to do brush lettering, this is how we might write the word light. Um, but since we are going to fill it in with um, the little stars, we're going to be using faux calligraphy and I'll like, show you guys how to um, kind of mimic brush calligraphy without actually using brush calligraphy. So in the printed materials that I've provided to Strathmore, you'll see an instructional on how to do faux calligraphy. Basically, you're going to use your pencil to write out in cursive the word light. Now in order to mimic the thicker um, upstroke or downstrokes, we're going to go ahead and fill in with a pencil what those thicker areas might look like. So I am using the above um, brush lettering for reference, but just to show you that every time that your brush would have gone in a downward stroke, um, that's where you're going to thicken your lines. And it's just going to help you to visualize. You're going to shade in the areas um, that are supposed to be the thicker um, downstrokes so that you can kind of see where you're going to be filling it in with paint. And if you've never done um, this kind of lettering or faux calligraphy before, I encourage you to take a look at the additional handout that comes with this course. Um, it's going to give you a little bit more step-by-step -step instruction on how to do it. 
Um, but basically, anytime your pencil, when you're writing the word, is headed in a downward direction, you're just going to fill it in a little bit and create a thicker line. So that's just going to mimic how it would look if we did it um, in a brush calligraphy style. And again, I would keep the um, practice that we had around handy so that you can um, use it as a reference when you're doing the final piece. Now I'm writing in the Strathmore watercolor journal. Um, so this is going to be our basic template before we start painting. I do um, use a pencil to outline it lightly and then I'll show you how to get rid of those pencil lines so that we can begin painting over it. Again, you're just going to follow the natural curves of your, your, uh, your cursive lettering. Um, you see the G, um, it's kind of a tight fit, so I kind of created the thick line around the original line. Um, see the same with the H. So just play around with it until you're happy. We don't necessarily have to start painting until you are uh, really satisfied with how your lettering looks. And once you're happy with it, we're going to go ahead and lightly erase that. I love to use kneaded erasers when I'm doing watercolor pieces because it gently, very gently lifts off the pencil lead. Um, it keeps it really easy to read, but from far away, it's kind of hard to tell. So I'm holding it up closer for you to see. You can definitely still see the lines, um, but the kneaded eraser also makes it very clean um, or very easy to clean up because you're not going to get a ton of eraser dust. Okay, now let's get down to the actual painting. So what I'm doing is creating little tiny clusters of stars in different colors. We're still using the same color scheme that we're going to be um, painting the letters in with. But anywhere that we filled in a thick downstroke um, in one place on each letter. So here I'm choosing the center of the um, L. It's easier to choose the center so that you can kind of paint part of the letter on top and then paint part of the letter on the bottom. Um, so what I do is I do bounce between all the letters, um, kind of adding more color. Uh, depending on if I'm using that pink and I want all the letters to have a little bit of that same color, um, I just kind of bounce around. So the G has two areas where you're going to see the thicker downstrokes. I just choose the, um, the longer of the two. Um, it's going to be a little bit more um, visually appealing because you're going to see um, it's not going to cover as much of the G up. That shorter part of the G is going to be a little more difficult to paint. So just choose one area of the letter to um, add these little clusters of stars and then we're going to paint in um, the lettering around it afterwards. And much like in the first class, if you have areas that you want to fill in a little bit more, I do put tiny little dots in between the stars. It kind of insinuates maybe further away stars. Um, it just adds a little like cute touch to it and you're filling in the space. And once you're happy with how the clusters turned out, I would just let that section dry so that your hand does not um, accidentally swipe at it when you're doing the lettering. You're just gonna paint in the section. Um, like, again, like I said, again, it's kind of painting within the lines um, since we did outline the letters. Um, I'm playing with the, um, the pinks here, but I will add a little bit of a darker color. I'm dotting in some of that purple um, to, to simulate more of a galaxy type look. Um, so make sure you do change up the colors, it'll keep it visually interesting. Um, or you can also do it in one color if you want to do it, maybe not in a galaxy style. Um, so I have done that before as well. And just use creative license with however you want to decorate your lettering. Um, but basically this part is just filling in that section. And again, using a round tip brush lets you make those super fine lines like that tail end of the L that you see there. Um, it also allows you to fill in areas like the thicker lines um, relatively quickly. So just be patient. Use very light pressure when you're, use, when you're trying to get those thin lines in. Um, that way you can be more precise um, and even. So with your lettering, you want to try to keep it as consistent as possible so that all the letters have uh, consistency to them in terms of the thin and thick lines of each letter. Uh, with galaxy lettering especially, it's important to build up on the color so you can lay on um, a base color but you can continue to add more dimension to that color. Like you see I'm adding even more dark um, colors to that original pink that I laid out. Um, so it is a process, it takes some time. Um, so just continue to lay down color, let it build up. Um, it's going to create a little bit of a darker 
um, paint color, but that's perfect for a galaxy lettering. And you see here, I am alternating between using purple, pinks, blues. Um, I think the fun part about the Galaxy is that they're kind of all mixed in together. So it does make it visually more interesting if you use different colors and watch them kind of bleed into each other like that um, dark blue kind of just did with the um, pink and purple. So this part is probably the most time consuming part, it's going to take the longest to paint. Uh, so we are going to speed this up a little bit just so I can show you what um, we get to do with it after we're done painting. I am kind of using um, darker colors too for this because um, we are doing a galaxy style. I will be embellishing the letters um, with little white stars. So in order for the white to really pop, I do tend to use a little bit of the darker side. So I have been dotting in some areas with a little bit of black, um, black paint as well or um, the uh, Payne's Gray actually is really nice in here too. So in order for you to get kind of a darker color for all your paints, I would choose that color like the pink or the purple and then dot a little bit of the black in with it or mix it in. Um, and that'll kind of make it easier for you to do your embellishments later with the stars, um, the white stars really popping um, in contrast. And before we move on to the next stage, I kind of just add um, any additional color or, or make sure that I have the right coverage that I have before I let it dry. Once the piece is dry, we're going to go ahead and move on to the embellishment portion. Um, right now I'm using a gold gel pen to create the, um, it's basically like a drop shadow on the lettering, um, but it's not going to be as um, dramatic a drop shadow, so it's just going to be a little light outline on the side where a shadow may appear. So um, for me, I need to visualize where the light source may be. Um, right now it's kind of on that upper left corner. So I do put a little figurine there or something to kind of remind me if um, you're new to this, I suggest you do that also. It kind of helps you visualize where light would be and where a shadow might appear because of the light source there. So um, that's what that little panda is there to do. It's here to remind me that that's where the light is coming from. Um, so if you are new to lettering, it might be a little uh, reminder for you as well. So you'll notice that because it's a shadow, I'm not going over the whole word um, or every single line with the gold pen, just the um, illusion of where a shadow might show up. 
So um, if you want, I have done this also, you can totally outline the whole word um, in the pen in the gold if you like. It's really a stylistic preference um, for this purpose of this class, we're just going to do a shadow. I forgot to mention that this is a Uniball Signo gel pen. I'll also be using the Uniball Signo in the white. Um, I do find that this, uh, these two pens have a really smooth flow to it. However, if you are having any troubles with any ballpoint pens, um, what I do is I keep kind of a damp um, paper towel close by too, just to clean the tips of it if you feel like it is getting clogged. Um, it just helps you to keep that ink flow really consistent and even. And once we're done with the gold pen, we're going to let that dry again. Um, it does smear it easily, so just make sure that it doesn't look wet anymore. Now we're going to use a white gel pen to add just little tiny stars. Um, you can certainly use white paint or white gouache to um, create a splatter, but I don't like to do that um, since we have already we have also painted little tiny stars. Um, using a pen actually lets me have a little bit more control, so I am doing just a variety of uh, different size dots as well as these little um, little cross um, hashes that's going to simulate like a more of a twinkling star so um, just go ahead it's kind of a random process I just see where I might want to add a, a larger star and that's where I'll add it So some gel pens um, like this one are actually archival, the ink is archival so um, it'll actually hold the color for a very long time um, and be uh, pretty light fast too. So it's actually a really great medium I, I like to use with my paints. Um, so it is kind of um, more of a mixed media project but it, um, it does really help me control like very fine little tiny um, uh, details and things like that so I can add that um, with a pen pretty easily. And remember when I mentioned that um, you want to paint it a little bit darker so that the white can pop. Um, obviously the white is going to show up a little bit better if you do have a darker background. So if you chose to use lighter colors, um, this might not um, show up as well for you. Um, but because we dotted in some of that black and, and darker colors in there, that white is showing up really nicely. Some people operate um, under the mantra that less is more, but for me, more is more. So I just like to go over and make sure I add final touches. Um, I like to have lots of stars and make it, it makes it really pop. Um, lastly, we'll be using a Sakura Pigma pen in order to fill in the Be The Light. Again, you want to let everything dry, but I do use a piece of paper to kind of cover it so that I don't smear anything while I'm filling in the mono lettering. And once you're done with that, this is it. This is the whole project and it's just a fun way to add embellishment to your lettering. I hope you enjoyed this course. There are two more to come. Again, we are building on the skills that we learned in the first two courses. So I hope you join in again.